This lesson is how to decenter men and stop craving male validation. You need to find hobbies that don't have to do with men. If you don't have any hobbies, then the only real thing going on for you that's outside of the normal is your relationship. Next is make a to-do list every single day that doesn't have to do with men. Wake up, you're getting on, you get on a dating app, you text men, swiping on a dating app to texting these men, and then you call them and you're on FaceTime with them all day. You're always with them. Anytime they want you to pull up, you're pulling up. Texting them all day will not be a fucking option because you're gonna cut that out by only doing things that you have to do on your to-do list. Obviously, keep yourself so busy that you don't have time to think about them. This one works wonders. You don't have to act like, Oh, I'm gonna ignore his text or for three hours because girl you're already not gonna respond for those three hours because you're gonna be doing things to level up yourself and then slowly but surely you will start to get used to their presence not being there all the time it'll become a normal thing for you not to call them and not to text them you realize how much happier you are to not constantly being like how can I cater to the male gaze how can I make him think that I'm this amazing person because you'll just be living your life you won't be asking yourself why hasn't he called me back yet you'll be so busy to the point where you won't even notice that he hasn't texted you and that is how you start to decenter them from your life by just doing you delete the dating apps i'm not playing with you delete the dating apps girl having dating apps just proves that these random men that you don't even know still have access to you, you need to make it clear to yourself you're not accessible without commitment and dating apps girl there's no commitment coming out of dating apps especially tinder go ahead and stop checking your social media dms messages notifications these are men that you you've never met you don't see them and yet you're wondering who's liking your stuff you're wondering who's in your dms if you're checking your dms specifically to text men ooh, ooh, this next one girl, do not snapchat a man do not snapchat a man do not snapchat a, absolutely no exceptions i didn't care about a man then i would choose to snap him just think about that like as a man, why would he choose to snap you over just texting you regularly? When a man asks me for my Snapchat, I immediately am like, get far away from me. Last one is you do not have to hate men in order to prioritize yourself in your life before theirs. Just keep your distance. I'm not saying act like men don't exist and stop dating and stop. No, like absolutely not. I'm just saying you need to always put yourself first. The moment that you put a man before you is the moment that you make men the center of your life. That's a no-no. They should be centering you, honey. I'm going to let you guys screenshot this for future use so that you never forget. All right, dolls. Good this luck. is why it is so important that we as women decenter men from our lives. I have just been radicalized to the idea of decentering men from our lives. Like I've heard people say that. I've been like, yeah, okay, it makes sense. But recently I've just been like on a kick to like get gather every woman that I can in my into my bosom and say, baby, you gotta stop centering your self-worth around men. This comment right here explains it all. If a man gets wind of the fact that you have any ounce of self-confidence, he will find a way to squash it. The more self-confidence that you have, the less of a chance they have at manipulating you. So it doesn't matter what size you are. It doesn't matter what you look like. They will find a way to wear you down, to make you feel like garbage because it's easier to manipulate you that way. You could be the most beautiful woman on the face of the planet. I mean, look at that. Look at what they're saying about Margot Robbie. Look at what they're saying about Margot Robbie. Calling her mid, calling her mid. I have my own theories about that whole push to convince people that she's mid. And I think it's really just so that like we as regular women look at someone like Margot Robbie and go, wait, they think she's mid? Well, then what am I? But that's besides the point. My point being that they'll call someone like Margot Robbie mid just to humble her. So it doesn't matter what you look like. You could be a thin woman. And if you reject a man who is interested in you, he'll call you fat because he thinks that's the worst thing that you could possibly be called by a man or by anyone. And in the same breath, they'll look at a really thin woman and go, she's too skinny for me. She's like a skeleton. She's all bones. You see how we can never win? Really became radicalized to the idea of decentering men from our lives when that whole thing was going around when it came out that morgues tend not to um hire men because they have relations with the corpses my sisters 
Y'all competing with corpses. <laughs> Man's opinion of you holds no weight. And I always think it's funny whenever um, I talk about how many attractive men I've pulled in my past, when they go, oh, <laughs> men will sleep with anything. That says more about you than it says about me, beloved. The utopia that I believe we could reach if we stopped centering our self-worth around men. My angels, I will leave you with this quote that I saw from this Tumblr post the other day that really helped me with my radicalization on this whole thing. Pause to read, really let it sink in, and let me know what you think. Love you. My first and most important resolution for 2023 is to just completely decentralize men in every aspect of my life. Like dating, just at the top of the list, done. Don't care for it, don't eat it. Hookups, disgusting. Who even likes that? And just in every topic, conversation, media feed, I'm so fucking sick of hearing about men. I'm sick of talking about men when I'm out with my, f like it's, it like I am tired of going out with girls and for an hour and 45 minutes, the conversation is about how bad a man treated us. Like it's good to vent and it's, it's good to get it out and share and like have that. But there's a point where it's like, is there anything else in the world to talk about? And granted this post in itself is kind of talking about men, but like this is, this is the last one entire childhood my mother from personal experience would constantly tell me don't ever 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 put your life on pause for a man like don't move anywhere for him don't stay somewhere for him always put yourself first right guess what i did the opposite of course whoever listens to their mother i dated my ex-boyfriend throughout grad school it was a long distance relationship he was in the states i was in italy and then when i was in grad school he promised me that he wanted to marry me like that was his thing he brought it up i didn't say anything about it i was good just like going with the vibes and all of a sudden he's like marriage and i was like wait what is going on oh marriage okay cool so the plan was i would go down to florida after i graduated we would try it out for six months and get married and then a few months in he was like oh no 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 i i can't we can't get married anyway because of that specific decision i put on pause a bunch of opportunities i possibly could have had straight out of school and i ended up derailing my life for like three years but ultimately the lesson that i should have already learned just by listening to my mother was don't center men luckily i don't have regrets but i can't say it wasn't a difficult lesson i don't know who needs to hear this but i know someone does decentralize men if you want to be free if you want to know your worth if you want to actually find yourself, decentralize men. If you continue making men the center of your life, you will lose. Your validation doesn't come from men. It does not come from their validation. It doesn't come from men accepting you, validating you, liking you. It doesn't come from that. Until you stop trying to appeal to the male gaze, you are never going to be free. What men think of you should not be your concern. Why are you looking for validation from men? Find yourself and know your worth because your worth is not in what men think of you. Your identity is not in men. The more you make men the focus of your life, the more likely you are to find yourself in unpleasant situations, the more likely you are to get played, the more likely you are to get treated horribly. Everyone knows when someone doesn't value themselves the way they're meant to. And unfortunately, people exploit that. So if you are someone who has made men the focus of your life, just know that other men know that and the wrong men will exploit that and use that in their favour. Decentralise men, focus on finding yourself, focus on knowing yourself, focus on healing. Until you know who you are, you will never be able to find the compatible partner anyway. There is so much more to life than men, so be free today. Men on the internet are very upset with the descriptor, he's just Ken. Barbie law being that men existed from the very beginning as like an add-on for Barbie's storyline. Men don't understand that Ken is an accessory in Barbie lore, yet have no problem making women accessories to their lives. They're mad that Barbie is the one with the job. She's the doctor, she's the president, she has the house, she has the car, right? And Ken is just there, sitting beside her, looking pretty. And they don't like that. The roles are completely reversed in Barbie lore. And we can see that. We are the center of our own lives with Barbie. We are the main characters. And it never occurs to men that women can be the main characters 
and men very secondary ones because men see us as the accessories. We are the cans in men lore. Hi, Camille here to remind you that if you're going to decenter men from your life, it's actually not just a phase, it's an actual everyday practice that you need to utilize every single day in order for it to effectively work. And if you want tips and tricks on how to do that, stick around and I'll teach you how. Number one, delete all your dating apps, honey. By you searching and swiping each day on different men, technically you're kind of making them the center of your life when really you should be centering yourself. So delete those dating apps, honey. It's not working for you. It's low hanging fruit, trust me. Number two, fix your circles. Not everybody is meant to be in your life. And as you glow and grow on your journey, you're gonna find that the people that you were once aligned with, you no longer align with them anymore. And that's totally okay. If you have that girlfriend who's constantly centering men and is constantly just obsessing about a husband, her boyfriend, or always has man problems, you need to let her go, sis, okay? I know it's hard, but she's gonna hold you back. Because the more you let go of those misaligned friends, the more space it creates for you to invite more aligned friends into your life. Number three, find a hobby. It can be anything. Something that made you happy growing up as a kid, tap into that again. For me, it was always theatrics and being creative, such as photography, fashion, and just expressing myself through those outlets. It allowed me to just tap back into my inner child and just do something that I'm passionate about. And you can also make it into a hustle, baby, okay? Don't wait on a man to invest in you, okay? Invest in yourself. Ooh, what number am I at? I got the attention span of a squirrel baby, so just bear with me. We're just gonna go off the top from this point. Ooh, yes, have a self-care day. Self-care day. It's basically a day where you just do whatever, you spoil yourself, whether you buy yourself flowers, buy yourself makeup from Sephora, you can buy yourself new skincare products, get a massage, get your hair done, get your nails did, take yourself shopping. And get into the habit of doing that because that self-care day can turn into self-care days. Invest in your goals, no matter how big or small they are. Yo, the number of women that I see buying houses, investing in their businesses, starting businesses, going back to school to learn a new skill is astronomical. Bidding on a man to do those things for you, you're kind of centering them. Like and comment for more. But you can't make being a wife and a mother the center of your entire being there's more to life than that point number one i firmly believe that if you make major life decisions like marriage or kids or maybe even career when you're too young because your frontal lobe isn't fully developed you are going to make the grave mistake of taking a single role in your life and making it your entire identity because you don't have anything else to build that identity so your entire personality is going to be rooted in one role like those girls on facebook that you went to high school with whose entire personality is being a wife and mom that's not healthy and that's why we need to decentralize men Two, that whole argument of he, if he doesn't, it's okay, another man will, that might be all well and true, but the focus shouldn't be on if another man will. The focus should be if he doesn't, that's fine because I still have a beautiful life to get back to and it is not diminished in any way due to the, due to the absence of a male presence. Decentralize men. Guys literally know how to look past all of their feelings and do what's best for them. Women are literally taught to center men at the core of their existence, even from like childhood. When I first moved to Toronto, I moved into this condo where I'm not even kidding you, everyone knew everyone. It was a super lit building, everybody was dating everybody, everybody was doing whatever they wanted to do. There was two girls in the building, we're gonna call them Sasha and Angie, that I would see time and time again. We were all kind of in little situationships at the same time. Coming around to the start of the pandemic, we would always have like little game nights, drinks nights with our little situationships. Now Sasha was dating this guy who she had known for literally two business days. Me and Angie were seeing guys who we kind of had been on and off with for like way too long. Now we're gonna call Sasha's man Eric. Eric was chill, but Eric was also from Vancouver, so he didn't really know anybody out here. Now even with him being from Vancouver, he kept really close ties to his family and friends. So when they started dating, they started spending a lot of time together. Which honestly is whatever, you're honeymooning, you're playing house, having a great time. Now right before the crazy back-to-back -back lockdown started hitting, we never really saw Sasha and Eric. 
Anytime we wanted to see her, she would bail on us. If we had virtual Zoom calls, she wouldn't show up. If you texted her, you may not hear from her for like a few days type thing. Like she was caught up, girl. Now fast forward to the time when travel started to get sticky. After not hearing from Sasha for like a week or two, she randomly group FaceTimes me and Angie. And she pretty much tells us that Eric is moving back to Vancouver. He wants to go home to avoid all this travel nonsense. And we're like, oh no girl, that's so sad, Ray Tay Tay. And we're here assuming that this is the end of the relationship because they have been dating for a total of five minutes. Nope, this girl tells us she is going to follow this man out to Vancouver. So we're like, oh, okay, Godspeed, be safe, like keep in touch. We haven't really been hearing from you, but keep in touch. So they leave and once they're there, we literally never hear from this girl. Like the only reason I knew this girl was alive was because she would view my Instagram stories. Anyway, so according to socials, she's fully integrated into his life. Like so many posts with his friends, even posts with his mom at one point in time. Anyway, I move out of the condo and rarely ever think of this girl again. Tell me why randomly one day Angie hits me up. She's like, girl, you will not believe who came to my house today. Obviously it was Sasha. Apparently this girl came home and this man had left. All she had from him was literally a text that said he had to leave for an opportunity and that he would contact her when it made sense. His family wouldn't tell her nothing. His friends wouldn't tell her nothing. After a month, she left Vancouver. When she got back, she had no one because she had centered her life around this man. If y'all knew the full reason why he left, y'all would understand why I'm always saying decenter men. They are their priority. He decided to wait until we've been together seven years, until I moved across the fucking country, left all my friends, my bands behind to support his ass. I feel like if this video had been posted like three years ago, the response would have been way different. And I think that was the type of response this person was thinking that they were going to get. More like empathetic, oh fuck him, it's okay honey type of responses. But like women are fed the fuck up. And that comes from all the pain and torment that these men have put us through. And so I think now as a collective, when women see another woman who is putting a man at the center of their life, it's kind of like this tough love, get it the fuck together kind of response. And I would like to think that this tough love stems from a place of care, of being like, we don't want you to have to go through this ever again. And also it can get even worse than that. And like the reality is you have women who will get rid of their community, their family, their friends, their job to center their lives around a man who would sell them out for a McChicken. Under the patriarchy, very, very, very few men care about women. And that's why you have women building community with each other, focusing on themselves, their career, their home, their spirituality. Because these men tend to be like leeches and they take and take and take and they rarely give. That's why you have women charging a fee before they even go on dates now. You have women being like, cash at me $100 so I don't waste my fucking time. And I don't blame them. And it's like women can bend over backwards, spend all this money to get surgery, completely change their lives to fit a man's standard. And men can't even wash their fucking ass. And I just like want everyone to like let that sit in. At the end of the day, it's really sad what this person went through, but I feel like a lesson was learned here. And at least she learned it early. I realized that I needed to decenter men from my life when I got out of my abusive relationship. I was living by myself. I was paying all of my own bills for the first time in my life. Um, you know, 23 years old, finally out on her own completely. And I still looked back and I literally felt more grown and like I had my life more together when I was with my ex even though I was in a full-blown abusive relationship and was miserable every single day. A year ago today I was so miserable I genuinely almost can't describe it. So dependent on him, so deep in the throes of a trauma bond, literally walking on eggshells like his mood determined my entire day. You know, couldn't have a good day if he wasn't having a good day. Constantly just trying to do everything to make me good enough for him and it never working. So insecure, so miserable. But also we were living together and we had two dogs and he paid all the bills and I was just like being a cute little wifey and like working for his company even though they weren't even paying me. And every night I was like making him dinner and in the morning I was taking the dogs out and getting him coffee and making sure his wallet and keys were there and it was just like so cute. No, it was literally miserable and abusive. 
And yet, literally like six months out, doing my own thing, building my platform, everything like that, literally I still would have those intrusive thoughts of being like, oh my God, I had my life so much more together last year. And why is that? Why is that? Because it is undeniable that if you were raised and socialized as a woman, the messaging you have gotten from day one straight up back to fairy tales and Disney princesses is that literally men are the prize. Men are the prize and how worthy you are is in direct relation to if men want you or not. And this is coming from someone who has been a feminist, like literally in like conservative small town ass Georgia, literally getting in a fight with someone over abortion rights in sixth grade. Like, do you know what I mean? And literally still, those ideas are so entrenched in our brains that I literally was sitting there and being like, well, it's actually better to be in an abusive relationship with a man than to not have a man at all. And it happens constantly. It's so commonplace. Like think about how many women you know are in horrible fucking relationships with men just because, well, at least I can keep a man. Keeping a lying, cheating, abusive, etc. man is not a flex, I promise. And yeah, leaving was really hard, but it would have been way harder to stay in a relationship trying to make it work with someone who was committed to mistreating me. Decentering men is legitimately one of the best things I've ever done because you get to take them off of that pedestal of male validation and importance and you get to realize that every man you talk to is literally just some guy. It's so crazy like I've spent so many years like hyper focused on dating trying to meet someone putting myself out there going on these dates centering men seeking validation from guys only seeing self-worth in myself if I had a guy in my life or I had a crush or I had someone who was interested in me and I've totally done a 180 and now I'm you know not centering men I've worked on myself so much in the last four years of therapy I am aware enough to not only see my validation and my worth through men in my life and having a guy and I feel like that's a lot of personal growth. I told somebody that I would make a video on how to decenter men and I'm going to make it into a couple of videos because I've tried to record it as one video several times and it's just too much. Um, I started decentering men 10 months ago. I pinned the video of when I started so you can kind of see where my head was at. But to give you the bullet points, um, I wanted to deconstruct from the idea that some forms of love were more important or valuable than others. I wanted to free myself from the burden of performative desirability for men. And I wanted to make decisions that were well and truly my own. Basically, I just got to the place where I realized that so many of my decisions were centered around what men would want towards making myself as likable or desirable to men as possible. And it was A, robbing me from present happiness, um, but also it was distancing my, me from myself. I just started realizing that I, I felt like I didn't know who I was sometimes because I couldn't tell what I wanted anymore because I was just making decisions for other people. And I also had the sneaking suspicion that when I started unpacking the things that I knew I was doing for men, that I would find a bunch of unconscious things that I was doing for men. Because I was raised in a culture that taught me that being desirable and likable for men was just one of the most important things that I could do. And in my household in particular, I was taught that. I feel very much that I was raised to be a wife. And I mean that in the creepy way, because I was very religious as a child, but I also mean that in our culture, we were taught to, in our culture, we see our life as a narrative, right? You see your life as a story. And for women, I think we're taught to view our life as a love story. I think that we're taught to view romantic love as the pinnacle of happiness for us, as our salvation, as our, the place where we are made whole. And even if you get to an age where you go, well, obviously that's bullshit. Um, I think that the underlying like level of importance for that stays with you. And it's hard to fully let go of it when it is so like practically important, right? Because even if you let go of the Disney aspects of romantic love, in our culture, it's very hard to find 
intimacy, either emotional or physical intimacy outside of romantic love. It's very hard to find emotional support or support network without romantic love. It's very hard to just survive because it's expensive without romantic love. Like there's so much writing on this one kind of relationship that it's not a surprise to me that we've become so obsessed with it. But I don't want that obsession to take over my life. So the very first thing that I did in this, I'm going to get to the one thing and then we'll do another part. So the very first thing was I had to deal with the surface level stuff. Get a journal. Get a journal and start journaling. Journal once or twice a day. Once or twice a day sounds like a lot, but my journal entries are really short. So I'm not going to show you a journal entry, but I'll tell you that like the first one on my journal takes up this much space out of an entire page. You don't have to journal an entire page every time you open the book. Just write a couple sentences. If you want to write a whole page, you can. Okay. If you don't like writing, start a video journal, start an audio journal. But I highly recommend creating a record for a few reasons. One, you have something to go back to, but also because if you don't kind of force yourself to sit down and take time to really engage with these ideas, really engage with them, you're not going to get down deep enough to pull these ideas up from their root, right? You're going to be fighting them all at surface level and you're never going to get down to the cause. So like I can say that, of course, it's ridiculous for me to have these ideas about romantic love and I'm just not going to do them anymore and I'm not going to make these decisions. But that's me solving things on a very surface level. And if I'm not pulling this up from the root, it's not going to work. But if I get down to the root and I go, all of this stems from the fact that because of the fact that my family didn't accept me or love me for the way that I was, I'm banking on the fact that I'll find that in somebody else. If I don't get down all the way to that, then I'm never going to pull it up from the root. But if I get all the way down to that, then I can challenge that idea. So that's the other thing that you're going to do in your journal. You're going to write down these ideas, but you are going to devil's advocate yourself. This is the only instance where being a devil's advocate is handy, but you have to be the person to challenge these ideas. If you're struggling with it, and you have someone in your life that you really trust, share this journey with them and have them play devil's, play devil's advocate. If you don't have someone you can trust, put it in my comment section and I will play devil's advocate. But it's so important to do this. So like if you're a woman who, you know, your desire to please men traces back to your fear of being alone, then a devil's advocate argument against that could be that as a woman, you are very likely to outlive your partner. So the idea that you're going to have someone forever because you get married is, or if you get into a relationship, is not sound. So maybe it would make sense for you to take some of the expectation off of that relationship and expand your community. See? See? So, so surface level stuff first. Keep digging. Keep asking yourself why. And then when you get to the, to the bottom, challenge. Challenge, challenge, challenge. Do not let stuff fly. If you have a therapist, I highly recommend talking to them about this so that they can help you with it. Uh, my therapist has never done this before with anybody, and she's baffled by it at sometimes, but um, she's still handy occasionally at challenging me. We'll, we'll go over these together, and if I'm having trouble challenging, sometimes she can prompt me. So help, help, get help. Um, also, if you're doing anti-racism work, this fits in very nicely in places with anti-racism work. I used to keep two separate journals. Now I just keep one journal. Just a thought. Um, so that's the first step. Very surface level. Um, I'm going to make more videos. Uh, I just don't have time to do that tonight. Um, but in the next couple of days, I'll make a couple more videos of this in a series. So I find that a lot of people really don't know what decentering men means. Decentering men do not mean hate all men, get rid of every man in your life, da da do 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 the usual. Decentering men simply means you understand that there is more to life than just men. You're not making them the core focus of your life. You understand that, hey, I have a life and I have to be able to fill my cup, live my life before I make anybody else a priority. You are the priority. You're not making men the center focus. There's That's not just all to you. You can be in a relationship and still practice decentering men. Some people will get into relationships and make that relationship their entire identity. And then when the relationship ends or let's say, let's say something happened, they end up losing themselves because they made that relationship their entire focus and they forgot that, hey, I can still be practicing decentering men and making me the priority.
And for my girls who are not in relationships, it's very important that you find other things to do with your time. Find a hobby, go to networking events, plan and book trips, adopt a pet, go start an outdoor garden, go volunteer somewhere. There is something else you can be doing with your time other than making men the core focus of your life. There is so much more to life. This life is so grand and huge and some of y'all will really miss out on living a good, good, fulfilling life because you made men the entire focus when there's, oh my God, like there's so much, <laughs> so much out here. <laughs> we all know that one person who made men the topic of their conversation, like every single conversation they have, men is always the topic. And you want to know why? It's because they don't know how to decenter men. They don't know that there's so many more conversations to be had. There's places to go. One thing that I cannot deny within a man and that I have learned about a man, he knows how to decenter women even when he's in a relationship. He understands that I am my own human being with my own life and I have to be able to live that at the end of the day. And this is why people who practice the art of decentering men or women in their lives end up moving on a lot faster is because they understood that I have my own life. I'm my own human being. And that show is not stopping even when I'm in a relationship. That's not my whole identity. So that's all decentering men means. It doesn't mean hate men. It doesn't mean despise men. It just means prioritizing the fact that you are your own unique individual.